Let's add custom enchantments to Minecraft. Forging fabric courses with advanced topics such as entities, custom structures, and 3D armor models linked in the description below. Alright, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding custom enchantments to Minecraft. So this is actually fairly straightforward, all things considered. We're going to see one particular example on how to add an enchantment, the actual functionality of which is fairly straightforward to understand. If you have any other functionality that you want to add, this is of course something where you just have to implement some things yourself, but we're also going to see in just a moment some vanilla examples of enchantments so that you can basically model your custom enchantments off of that as well. So in our tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called enchantment. There you go. And in there we need two new classes. One of them is the mod enchantments class. And the other one is going to be the lightning striker enchantment. Quite the name, but that's going to be fine. And we'll start with the particular enchantment class right here. This is going to extend the enchantment class. There you go from net micro world item enchantment. Then we'll hover over this create constructor matching super. And before we forget it, we're going to make this public and then also change the array right here to dot dot dot. This just makes it so that we can pass in however many slots we want here at the end and it will just sort of convert it to an array uh, in it by itself basically. Right, to see some vanilla enchantments, what we can do is we can middle mouse point click on this enchantment class and I believe that actually inside of here we don't, we won't see that much, but what we can then do, is, I mean there's there's a lot of stuff to see anyway, but the actual enchantment functionality, when you click on it and then press Control H, you can actually see all of the different enchantment classes that are basically available here. So, I mean, as you can clearly see, there are a lot of things in here. So I think when something that's interesting, for example, you know, something like the Thorns enchantment might be interesting. So for example here you can see some methods that are overwritten here so for example the do post hit the do post hurt method which is a very interesting one uh, should hit get damage you can see there are quite a few methods in here and as you've seen right with this you know particular class hierarchy there are a lot of enchantments that you can take a look at so i highly suggest taking a look at a few of those and then hopefully you'll be able to manage you know whatever kind of enchantment that you want to add Right, but let's proceed right here. So here we want to add two methods. One of them is the get max level method, which just is going to return two. So for this particular enchantment, there's going to be two different levels. And the second method we want to override is the do post attack method. So this one is called after, well, a certain entity, in this case, the P attacker has attacked the target right here. The first thing we want to check is whether or not the P attacker is not on the client side level. So, so negating it with a exclamation mark P attacker dot level dot is client side. Once again, I want to draw your attention to the exclamation mark at the very front. We don't want to be on the client when we do this. Very important. Because then what we're going to say is server level, which is going to be the world, equal to E attacker dot level dot cast. And then hitting the tab key to autocomplete this and then choosing the server level right here. We also want the block position. So this is just going to be the position equal to the target position. So this is going to be the P target, not block position. There you go. And those are the two different variables that we need. And then we basically want to spawn a lightning at the position of the target. So what we're going to say is that if the level, so if the level is equal to one. So this would then be, of course, the enchantment of level one. Then we want to spawn a lightning. And how do we spawn a lightning? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. First of all, we need to be on the server. So that's why, you know, I have this one right here, right? Checking that we're on the server. And then I can call entity type dot lightning bolt dot spawn, passing in the world, passing in null, null position, the mob spawn type. We're going to choose triggered and then true and true. So you can see this will basically spawn the lightning bolt. And this is basically also how you spawn any different type of entity. So you can say entity type dot, for example, pig, and then you could spawn the pig as well. So this could be the pig striker enchantment. But of course, that you know doesn't make quite a lot of sense. But in theory, you could also do that as well. Right, so let's just copy it. So I'm going to select it, control C to copy it, control V to paste it in. I'm going to change this to two. And then we're just going to spawn two lightnings. So this is pretty much the rest of this. And that is pretty much all of this class already done. So this is all that we need to do. So what we're going to do then is, of course, register the enchantment as well. So in the mod enchantments class, well, you've seen it 
plenty of times already. What is it? Of course, a deferred register, this time of type enchantment, right here called enchantments. And this is going to be equal to a deferred register dot create or registries dot enchantments this time and then tutorial mod dot mod ID. And of course, I already hear you scream. We know it. There is a register method, which is, of course, static and void and has an I event bus called event bus in it. And this is where we'll call the register method right here, passing in the event bus. And so that we don't forget it, tutorial mod class right here, mod enchantments dot register and then passing in the event bus. That's great. Right. And now on to actually registering the particular enchantment. So what we're going to do is a public static registry object of type enchantment. There you go. This is the lightning underscore striker. This is going to be equal to enchantments dot register the, with the name lightning underscore striker and then a supplier of a new lightning striker enchantment. We're going to choose the rarity uncommon, the enchantment category weapon, and then the equipment slot main hand. So there you go. And that is literally all that we need to do to actually register this enchantment. All of the functionality, as you've seen, is inside of the enchantment class. And then last but not least, we also need a translation. And that's going to be in the lang folder in underscore us JSON file. I'm going to quickly copy this over. This is not very complicated at all. You can see it's just enchantment tutorial mod lightning underscore striker. This name, of course, being the same as this name right here. And then it's going to be displayed as the lightning striker. The different levels, we actually don't have to translate. This is going to be done, you know, automatically. Basically, if it's level one, it's going to look like this. Level two, look like this. So that's the general idea right here. So this is actually all that we need to do. So let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft. And as you can see, the lightning striker has been successfully added to the game, the enchantment. So let's just put it on some swords. And there you go, lightning striker one. And then right here, lightning striker two. So, and then let's set down a sheep or, you know, a couple of sheep. Let's see. There you go. Spawn the lightning and they're pretty much done for immediately. And then the other one as well works totally fine. So this is pretty much how easy it is to add a custom enchantment to Minecraft. Right, that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.